Well, good morning, everyone. It's so nice to be here. Out of the, what, what did we say, 18 year, 16 years uh, that we've been having these events, I think I've probably been here 13 or 14 of them. And when I couldn't make it, um, Martin Lucier, our culinary programs manager, who's with me today, um, came in so that we always had represented raw, live food in a really delicious way because our motto is making healthy, living delicious. If it's not delicious, you're not going to eat it. And I don't blame you. I don't eat food that I, that I don't like either. So our goal always is to make it so delicious that you would prefer it over other kinds of foods. But we also have to make it easy because, you know, we're all busy people. It can't, you know, you can't have to spend all day in the kitchen to make something. And today we're going to be preparing chocolate. And I want, to, I want to say I'm not a drug pusher. Um, and ch chocolate is kind of a recreational drug. It's not something that I recommend that you, you know, think of as one of the food groups. It doesn't fit into, in my mind, doesn't fit into the vegetables and fruits and legumes category. Although the desserts that we're making today are really, really good options for some of the other kinds of desserts that you might reach for when you are celebrating or you do just kind of need a pick-me-up. Um, so we're going to be showing three different desserts but in ways, multiple ways of using them. But before we get started, because I know there are a lot of people still coming in, I just want to talk a little bit about what you found on your chairs. And those of you who are sitting way in the back don't have the the opportunity to see what it is I'm talking about, so you might want to move up a little bit because we have the three recipe cards, and our recipe cards are, are keepers, right? Not just a scrap of paper. They are, they're index cards, so you can keep them in your files. So we have three recipe cards so you can follow along with us. And we also have uh, the introduction to our first online training course. So. A lot of you have come up to me. I've had so many people since we started setting up our booth yesterday. By the way, we do have a booth in the main auditorium, and we're set up against the far wall right before you go into the restrooms there. So you can't miss us. Come by and chat with us if you want to. Um, and we're going to be selling some amazing desserts. Actually, here's some pictures of them. You can see some of the incredible desserts that we, uh, that we make. And we're going to be selling it for $6 a piece. So they're, they're pretty wonderful. California mudslide pie, key lime pie, white coconut vanilla cake, tiramisu, and white chocolate raspberry cheesecake. So those probably won't last long, <laughs> just to let you know. So anyway, we're set up back there, and we have some of our books for sale. And most important, we want to meet you and talk with you. Because we're in the middle of a transition at Living Light. Um, I started the school uh, 18 years ago, and we have been located on the north coast of California, on the Mendocino coast, for the last 11 years. And we've had people from over 60 different countries attend the school. And in just a 21-day program, people learn how to teach, demonstrate culinary classes, um, and they go out into the world and they start teaching right away. And because of that, because we've been teaching people how to teach this lifestyle for, uh, for well, actually, I've been teaching people how to teach this for almost 20 years, but since we started the school, 18 years. So we have people in all these different countries, over 60 countries, actually teaching raw food classes. And many of them would like to teach at least a part of the curriculum that they learn at the school. They say, well, you know, I would love to have a Living Light Center in my area. How many of you wish you, there was a Living Light School in your area so you didn't have to travel to Fort Bragg, spend the money to stay in a hotel, but be able to learn at least near your home? Well, that's the reason that we are putting our classes online, but also that we are helping other people start their own Living Light Training Centers in their area. And so that's where our focus is going to start going. In other words, we're taking it to the people. And that's what really needs to happen. Because today it's more, getting more and more difficult to travel, isn't it? I mean, it used to be a lot more fun to get on that airplane than it is now. And so this is our motivation. Um, and so people have been coming up to me saying, I hear you're retiring. I mean, 
I've been teaching for over 40 years, raw food for over 20 years, and nobody can believe that I would ever want to retire. How could you do that? Well, I'm not really retiring. I'm expanding, but things are changing. Things are shifting. So that I'm going to be supporting these people who want to start their centers and training their teachers. Martine is our number one trainer, and she will be also spearheading this training operation so that we can teach teachers who want to teach our curriculum uh, all over the world. And so she's going to be doing a lot of traveling, and so are Dan and I. This is my husband, Dan Latterman, right here. He's the, the man behind the woman. That you know, None of this would be happening without him. And, um, and so that's the real story. It's not that I'm retiring. I'm actually probably going to be working harder than I've ever worked because I have to be in you know dozens of places at one time. But, um, but we're not going to be having you come to our center in Fort Bragg. There's one more opportunity to do that. The next course actually begins a week from today. And you all are close enough that you could make that trip. You don't have to worry about trying to get an airplane ticket a week from now. So if you want to be a part of the very last group that come to Fort Bragg, and I'm going to be teaching a lot of classes, then you'll have that opportunity. Um, but it's not the end there, the, because we are expanding outwardly. And we do have two of our first courses online now. The first one is our all-day Fundamentals of Raw Living Foods class. It's our flagship class. We have like 18 demos and talks, and I'm doing all the demos, so you would have an opportunity to see me um, sharing my 40 years of culinary experience with you. Um, a lot of information in those classes, not just a lot of videos, but videos and support materials and infographics. It's a really, really well orchestrated uh, all, it, it's a class that is exactly the same as the all-day course that you would take if you came to the school. Um, but you can take it over the course of three months if you want, because it's a self-directed online class. So we have that for you. And so one of the things on your chair is that announcement. It's another little index card that tells you about the online program. And besides that, the cult, besides the culinary program, we also have our raw nutritional courses that, are going, that are, are going to be all filmed, but now we have the first two-day raw nutritional science class online. I say two days, it's really 12 hours if you take it live, but again, you have, how much time do they have for that one, Dan? Is that the same thing? Three months, it's self-directed, so you can, you know, an hour every day or two hours on the weekends or however it works for you to, to take the science of raw food nutrition. And uh, that is, is conducted by Drs. Rick and Karen Dina. They are the best in the business. And you will really under, start to understand why raw food and the vegan diet also not only supports good health, but that you will actually thrive on that way of living. Um, yes, I know a lot of you can have a hard time believing that I actually have been teaching culinary arts for four, over 40 years. I'm 68 years young, and yeah, thank you, and I'm not special, so don't think it has anything to do with my genes, because I, I can look pretty good in genes, but I don't have great genes. My family has a, a, a history of poor health, just like many of your family does, um, cancer, heart disease, diabetes. Um, my, I never knew my grandmother because she died before I was born. My grandfather died when he was 50. Uh, my sister died when she was 10. Uh, I have a lot of, the ones that are living are mostly all obese. Um, my sister recently adopted a raw food diet and lost 100 pounds. She finally decided when she was about 50 that maybe I was onto something. So, uh, so I'm eight years older than her and people were saying they thought she was uh, that I, she was my daughter. So, um, anyway, I just want you to know that it's never too late to get younger and healthier. I started running when I was 65, and now I'm, you know, I'm winning in my age category. I mean, after the first race, I place in every race that I'm in. And so it's just never too late to take up something new that you never thought you could do. You just need to give your body the fuel that it needs. 
And tomorrow uh, at 1 o'clock in the garden room, my husband Dan and I are going to be talking about what else you need to do besides eating a great diet to really ensure good health. Because diet is the foundation, but it's not all there is. And even though I'm really invested in food, I know there's more to it. And so I want to share with you how you can ensure good health. So the topic of the talk is, is vegan enough to ensure good health? So we'll be talking about that in the garden room tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Also on your chair is a raffle ticket. And this raffle ticket is going to win some lucky person this beautiful Excalibur dehydrator. This is my favorite dehydrator in the world. I love the color, too. You'd never guess it. But um, they, it comes in all colors. But this is the color we're giving away today. It's a nine-tray Excalibur. And this is really the best, the best dehydrator. I've been using Excalibur for 20 years. And I wouldn't change for anything, even though I've tried the other brands. Um, so if, if you want to fill this out, you can... Uh, Dan, we didn't bring something for them. Okay, we'll take it at the end. Oh, we have a box over here. So we'll take it at the end. Um, and if you go to our booth, you can enter a second time. And if you come to our talk tomorrow at 1, you can enter a third time. So three opportunities to win um, that beautiful dehydrator. And we seem to, we, we're leaving dehydrators everywhere we go these days. Uh, Excalibur has become a wonderful sponsor for us and they have donated this fantastic um, dehydration machine. I'm not really going to be using it today because we're using two other types of, of kitchen equipment today uh, but you gotta have one for your kitchen. Now the last uh, thing that you're going to find on your station, as I said, you've got three recipe cards, you've got our online course announcement, uh, your raffle ticket, and you have a, no, you don't have this, do you? You have a three-fold brochure about our school. Okay, and this is another full brochure about our school, and you're welcome to pick one up at our, uh, at our information table, which as I said before, is located on the back wall near the restrooms. And that's also where you can purchase any of these fantastic desserts. And they will not be available for very long. Okay, so the three different recipes that we're going to be making today. Um, one is a chocolate pecan bar. Yay. It is so good that when I do this demonstration on the road, people buy the book that, that it's in. I don't remember which book that, that is now. Raw Food for Dummies. People buy the book just so they can have the recipe because it's that good. We're also going to be making a chocolate velvet mousse that can double as an ice cream sauce or a topping for um, any other kind of dessert. And, um, and the chocolate ganache layer of this chocolate pecan bar also makes wonderful truffles. So it's another use that we're going to talk about. And then, lastly, I'll be making a chocolate cardamom cake. And the same chocolate filling that we're using for the truffles and the chocolate pecan tart is the layer that we will put in that cardamom cake. So you'll be able to see how we can mix and match different ingredients. Are you ready to get started then? Okay. So, yay. <laughs> so let's get started with the, the chocolate pecan bars. Or you could make it into um, little, little candy squares, which is the way we're going to be serving you. You're going to get to taste all of this a little bit later. Got to be patient, though. So we're going to start. For this recipe, you really need to have some kind of a food processor. It would take a while to really be, do this by hand. It could be done. But I'm one that says I, I, I love to prepare food, love to spend time in my kitchen, but I also don't want to work too hard. I just want to be creative and get to serve fabulous food to my friends and family. So I'm using a food processor. And you could have a like $39 or $49 uh, you know, Kmart brand or whatever food processor and make these recipes. So don't think you have to have an expensive Cuisinart for this. All right, so we're going to start by making the bottom layer. And the bottom layer has just a few ingredients, as you'll see. You can take a look at, at, your, um, at your recipe there. We have 
coconut oil. Now this coconut oil has been warmed to room temperature so that it, a warm room temperature, so that it is liquefied. Coconut oil is a saturated fat. It's one of the preferred fats for healthy desserts because even though it's a saturated fat, it does melt at 80 degrees, which is below body temperature, of course. And it ha it's half 50% uh, lauric acid, which is a good fat. So as fats go, as saturated fats go, coconut oil does have some benefits. I wouldn't recommend putting it in your smoothie, but for desserts, it's a good source of fat. And we're also going to be using dates. So we're making kind of a date paste here, and I'm using medjool dates, but any soft dates will do. I've already removed the pit from these dates, and these dates also are room temperature. We don't want to put cold dates into our coconut oil, because then the coconut oil will seize up it will get hard again because it is a saturated fat. So whenever you are mixing something cold with your coconut oil, you know, you're going to end up with, um, you're not going to end up with a nice fluid mixture, which is what we want here. Okay, so we put the dates in there. Um, we also are going to be adding a little extra sweetener. This is maple syrup. Maple syrup is really nice in chocolate dishes because it's, um, it has a deeper, a little deeper flavor, and it adds kind of a buttery quality. And that buttery quality helps to kind of mask the fact that it's not a butter or a kind of a dairy-driven dessert, which we all have that memory of from our childhood. So I'm also adding a little bit of vanilla, and vanilla is wonderful in chocolate desserts. Okay, so now I'm going to blend this just until it's a paste. So we have our dates, coconut oil, maple syrup, and vanilla. Here we go. Now this is going, can you hear me? This is, I'll step aside so you can hear me. This is going to be the bottom layer, because if you look at the photograph, you'll see that there's a bottom layer, and then there's a layer of chocolate ganache, and it has candy pecans on top. So that's going to be our third layer. Okay, let's just see. This, is, this has uh, blended pretty nicely, but let's just see if it's blended enough. I want to make sure there's no big pieces of date here. I think it needs to blend a little more because we have some of that coconut oil is still not mixed well. Okay. So now we're going to take that layer and we're going to add some pecans. And the pecans are what's going to really make it more kind of cakey, candy-like bottom is what that is. So we're going to add that. And they're already chopped. And all I'm going to do is just kind of pulse it to mix them. Rather than put it in a bowl and massage it and then I make another dirty bowl. As I said, I like making food, but I don't want to work too hard. So I always figure out ways of not having to wash a lot of dishes. It was kind of my job when I was a kid. And it's one I could do without. OK, so now that kind of cleaned up my, uh, my pan a little bit. And I'm just going to set this off to the side here so I don't have a lot of debris. And now, this is the bottom layer, so that's going to go in my tart pan. Now, you may not have a fancy pan like this. That's OK. Um, or a, you could do little individual tart pans if you want to. Or you could just put it in a brownie pan. That would work just fine. Except when you, when you do that, then you know when you cut that first one, it's always kind of the sacrificial piece, and the chef usually ends up eating that because we're so generous. We want, really want to please other people, and we don't think we have to have the most beautiful one. But this way, we all get to have the beautiful piece, first piece. All right. So we're just going to put this into our tart pan. 
like that. And I think I will put some in the, this one as well, so we'll do two. Martine, will you please take this away for me? I can actually use this again for my second. Remember I said I don't like to wash dishes. I'm going to make another dish. And it won't hurt for me to use this again. All right, so we're going to spread this out using our fingers just lightly to evenly distribute the mixture. By the way, I used parchment paper, just like this. This is a parchment paper. It comes like that. This will probably last you a couple of years. And some scissors to just cut um, a piece of paper to put on the bottom of my pan. You see, this is how these pans work, right? They just pop right out like that. So it's lined. The metal bottom is lined. And now I'm just pressing the bottom layer in. And this is just like, it, it, it will remind you of a caramel chocolate tr uh, pecan truffle, turtle. You know those turtles? It's very much like that. In fact, I love turtles. So this is a, kind of a nice substitute for that. So it's pressed in nice and firmly. And I'm going to use my spatula to just make it real firm. And this is going to chill normally. We won't be able to chill it for you today because we don't have that capability in our, with our demonstration here. But normally you would put this in the refrigerator or the freezer and let it chill while you make the next layer. So wasn't that easy so far? I mean, wouldn't you have fun just doing this with your kids so they can learn how to make easy but delicious and healthier. I'm not going to say healthy because I'm not going to lie to you. There's still sugar in here. Dates and maple syrup um, you know, are still concentrated sweeteners. But it sure is a whole lot better alternative than uh, what people are used to having. And you're going to see it's at least as delicious. I mean, real sweeteners are so much tastier. I mean, isn't wouldn't you rather eat a date than a spoon of sugar? Yeah, there's more flavor. It feels more real in your body, the way your body reacts to it. I'm kind of using my, my finger to kind of go down in between each of these grooves, which I'm not bothering to do over here because these grooves are barely wavy and these are deeper. So, so there's the bottom of that. All right, so we'll put those aside now and we'll make the next layer. And for that, Martine, could you just push that one over? And I'll thank you. Just put that one there. Okay, so now we're going to make the ganache layer. And this ganache layer is so practical because, as I said, I'm going to be using it for the topping, for the, for the cake or the tart. And I'm also uh, going to be able to make hand-rolled truffles with it. And I'm going to use it as a layer for my cardamom cake. So I'm going to make a double recipe of this. And so here I have, this is one recipe. This is maple syrup. And you've got that recipe right in front of you, so you can kind of follow along if you want to. And there's the other, other half. I wasn't sure if I was going to double this for you or not, so it's all separated out. You don't mind. And there's my coconut oil. Again, that's my saturated fat. And the reason that we're using the saturated fat is because it will firm up when we chill it. Doesn't that make sense? I mean, that's what you, you don't want a bunch of sticky, saucy mess when you pick it up. You want it to be firm. So now we're going to add our cacao. This is raw cacao powder. Can't have chocolate without that. Now, if you don't give chocolate to your kids, you can do this with carob. If you use carob, use less sweetener. That's a benefit of carob. You don't need as much sweetener it's because it's naturally sweet. Cacao is naturally bitter. It's really bitter. It doesn't taste good at all just by itself. You have to sweeten it. And so we have to use more sweetener for this with cacao than with carob. And I know, carob's not chocolate, is it? Don't expect it to be chocolate. But it can be very satisfying. And kids, you know, kids can grow up loving carob. 
And then they actually behave a little better. One time my dog got into chocolate and I thought it was a different dog. She didn't mind, she wouldn't do anything. And I thought, well, no wonder kids are wild, you know? Okay, because I don't have kids, I just have dogs. All right, so I'm gonna turn this on, I'm starting it on low, 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 low. And then I'm gonna, I can turn it up when I, you know, as I'm ready. Okay, you won't go through this because you're making a single recipe. A single recipe will just blend right up. But this is a double recipe and so it's having a little bit harder time because it is a thick mixture. So I've stopped it. I'm going to stir it by hand a little bit and then I will turn it on again. Okay. And really it can just be hand stirred. It could be whisked if you don't have a blender. But if most people have a blender. People ask me all the time, what's the most important piece of equipment for a kitchen? Raw food or not raw food? The best, the most important ingredient or the most important tool yep. is a good knife. Yep. You can do so much with a good knife. Dan and I spent a whole year on the road with just a knife, just to prove that you don't have to have a lot of fancy equipment. Another year we spent a year just doing things with a blender, not a blender like this, not a fancy Vitamix or Omega blender, just a cheap blender to show you that you can do great things with just a blender. So I would say those are the two most important things though, a good knife and a blender. Okay, so let's go ahead and just finish this up. There might be some little pockets of chocolate there. That is good. Now we have it. I can see that I had a well in there, so that worked. All right, so now I'm going to just pour the chocolate over the top. And you see it's actually quite liquid. This is a double recipe, so don't let me put it all on there. Oh, goody. Yeah. And we'll put a little bit on our on our individual tart. I would say this is a tart for four people. <laughs> I wouldn't serve this to one person, oh my gosh. Oop. All right, let's, uh, I think that we need a little bit more here. And then could somebody put this in the refrigerator for me so it could chill a little bit before I do my last demo of the day? Thank you so much. Sure. Yes. Um, I'd like to have, before you go, where are the paper towels? Did we take those away? That's all right. I'll use this. We'll just have to wash. All right. I don't like to wash as more than I have to. <laughs> oh, I'm really not lazy. <laughs> I just don't want excess work. I'm busy. I'm a busy woman. Okay, so now I have what's called an offset spatula. That's what this is. It's just a tiny little spatula. And I'm going to use this to spread my chocolate ganache, just like that. So far, do you think you could do this? Okay. You don't have to be a chef to be able to make great tasting foods. And a lot of people think because we're a culinary institute, and we are, by the way, a licensed culinary institute in the state of California, the only licensed culinary school, as far as we know, in the world that actually, um, that specializes in raw vegan cuisine. And so when you come to Living Light, you, you're certified by the state of California. That doesn't mean you have to come because you want to be, you know, you want to become a chef. Over half of the people who come to our school are just people who want to learn to make great tasting food. They don't want to work in a kitchen, a restaurant, or um, 
you know, or open a restaurant or anything like that. Okay, so now I'm going to top this with some candied pecans, like that, just to finish it up. And that's what really ends up giving you that, that uh, flavor of turtles, the pecans. Now these candied pecans were, first the, first the pecans were soaked in water to germinate them and remove the enzyme inhibitors, which are bitter. So you soak them in water for, oh, eight hours or so, and then you'd rinse them off and then toss them in a little bit of maple syrup, a pinch of cinnamon, a pinch of nutmeg, you've got the recipe for it there, and put it in your dehydrator. Now if you don't have a dehydrator, just skip the candied part and just sprinkle chopped pecans on top and that'll be fine. This just kind of takes it to the next layer, level. Now, once the, here, here's what it looks like. I can't take it out of these right now because it's too liquid, right? They have to be chilled. But we've made some in advance, so you're gonna have some samples at the end. Um, nice, you know, pretty generous little samples of this dessert, and uh, you'll be able to taste it for yourself. So this is going to be ours for later, I guess. Okay, so I'll put that aside. And um, I want to just show you what the truffles could look like once they are, once the, the, the filling, the ganache, is refrigerated, then you can roll them into balls because it'll be actually quite firm. You saw how liquid the coconut oil is, but it gets hard, right, when you refrigerate it. So it, the candy or the ganache gets very firm. You can roll it into balls. This is, a, this is one tablespoon of the filling. And then I rolled it in cacao nibs that I used a spice grinder to break up. So you can just do the whole cacao nibs if you want to, or don't roll it in anything because, you know, you just want to eat it. Um, you could roll it in any kind of fruit or nuts or coconut or whatever you want to make hand-rolled truffles. And they're fantastic. So that's just another way of using, I already have that there, okay, oh, over here, of using that ganache layer. So now we're going to show you how to make a chocolate mousse. And uh, that's going to be Martine Lucier. Martine is our culinary programs manager. She has been uh, at Living Light for, what, eight years? Something like I that? I came at Living Life in 2006. Yeah, well, why don't you, yeah. why don't you okay. tell your story? You have a question? You can use agave instead of maple syrup. You won't have exactly the same flavor, but it certainly will work. You could also use coconut nectar if you want. So, yes? What brand of cacao powder do you use? We use, you know, a, a lot of what we use comes from... Uh, um, uh, uh, Transition know? Nutrition, right. um, David Kaplan's products. He's fantastic. And uh, Martine, uh, is there another cacao uh, that you use besides Transition Nutrition? Sometimes we do uh, use uh, Living Intentions, uh, but mostly it's those two. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. All right. Come on, right. I'm going to take this aside and put it in the refrigerator okay. and let Martine show you how to make a fantastic mousse. When Martine is finished, then I'll come back on and I'm going to make that chocolate cardamom cake. Good morning. 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 Yes, those have to go in those. Yeah. Yeah, yeah.
It's very, very important, right? And sometimes color as well. Right? So I'm going to show you how to make this wonderful, wonderful mousse. Let's get started. So I'm going to use a food processor to process my avocados, right? So all of my ingredients will go in that food processor, right? And then I'm going to blend it. Um, if you don't have a food processor and you have a blender, it may work. You're just going to have to add a little more liquid into it to make sure that you're going to blend it. Um, the thing about when you are using or when, when you are using avocados or recipes, depending what you are making, you don't want to over whip them because sometimes it's going to start to oxidize and um, they're going to give you a different texture. So I'm using um, avocados, uh, has H-A-A-S, and they're nice and soft and very creamy. So I'm going to use my chef knife here. And um, a good way to know if an avocado is ripe is, of course, you want to touch it and have that little gear, right? And then there's a little button right here. So if it is easy to remove, like this, it's a sign that it is ripe as well. Uh, when you are buying your avocados, um, if they are hard, you can leave them on your counter and let them ripe. And when they're ripe, if you don't really could eat them right away, I would put them in the refrigerator. So it's going to slow, slow down the, um, um, the, the ripening uh, process. So I'm going to use my chef knife, and I'm just going to cut my avocados here. Right? So I'm just going to go around, and we know how long that they're shifted inside. And then I'm just going to twist them, and there you go. I'm being beautiful. Right? Amazing. And I love when they're nice and creamy. So I'm going to do the same thing here again. I'm going to remove that little button right there. And cutting around. Oh, amazing, I'm lucky. Sometimes you know you never know if there are going to be a brown spot inside, but that's my lucky day. <laughs> to remove the pit, what you can do is either you can hold your avocado in your hand or leave it on the cutting board. Just hit it, twist your knife, and pull the seed, uh, pull the seed out. You don't push it towards the blade. If you pull it, you're not going to cut yourself at all. And then what I want to do is I want to cut them in quarter. Or if you want, you can take a spoon to scoop out the meat. And I'm making a double recipe because I might need some of it. Right. So I'm going to use a spoon here to remove the flesh. Or what I can do when my avocados are done. <laughs> I can remove the peel just like this. So yes, um, sometimes I um, travel with Dan and Sherry, and um, if ever um, you are interested in um, teaching fundamentals, that's my baby. That's what I do. Sometimes I travel on the road and um, I teach fundamentals with Dan and Sherry, and I train people. That so it's a full day of with 17 demos with amazing samples and food. Oops, I was just Nobody told me anything. Boy, because I was talking and I got distracted. Right. So the peel in the trash and the avocado meat in the food processor. All right. So if we are making a um, chocolate mousse, we're going to need cacao. Well, like Sherry was saying, if you are sensitive to cacao because it has too much stimulant in it, you can always use carob, and then it's going to be a way sweeter. But today we're going to use cacao powder, and I'm going to use two different kinds of sweeteners. So depending what you are making, right, you are going to choose a sweetener of your choice. So when you are choosing a sweetener, think about three things. See, think about color, like if you're using clear agave or maple syrup. They're two different color. Uh, think about the flavor too as well. Agave is very neutral. Maple syrup has more intensity and depth into flavor as well. As if you are using evaporated cane juice, uh, evaporated cane juice, sugar, or if you're using honey, it always depends. You know, whatever sweetener, just think about that. And think if it is a liquid or syrup, or it is into a solid form. So three things that you need to think about when you are making a recipe. So in this case, I'm going to use a little bit of evaporated cane, evaporated cane sugar juice, right, which is a powder that will kind of replace uh, some brown, the 
replace the brown sugar that you can use in the recipe. And it is a whole food, it's not raw, but it's totally a whole food. And it will bring a beautiful depth um, flavor into this mousse. Then I'm going to use, in your recipe it says to use either agave nectar or coconut syrup. And I have coconut syrup or coconut nectar here. And as you're going to see, it's going to be very thick. Almost like molasses, right? And I love coconut sugar for many reasons. I think that it's a beautiful product and it tastes good. It has that coconut aftertaste uh, flavor for sure. And the glycemic index is lower than the sugar. So um, when you are using coconut uh, sugar, it has a glycemic index of 35. And it is considered a low glycemic sugar. Okay. See how syrupy it is? And then I'm going to add two more ingredients, a little bit of cinnamon, cinnamon and cacao, or cinnamon and carob goes very well together, or and a lot of uh, dessert recipe actually uh, that requires chocolate, and a little bit of vanilla extract. That's easy, right? Okay, <laughs> right, easy. And then I'm going to add a little bit of water just to make my mousse um, more um, soft and more creamier. I'm just going to start with that. I'm going to put my lid on top. That's it. So I'm going to stop right now. Oops. Okay. And then I'm going to take a spatula and just going to move around and scrape any uh, cacao powder that will be on the side of my vessel. And I feel that I need to add a little bit more water make it nice and creamy, and I'm going to process again. So you want to make sure to blend it long enough that all of the avocados will be breaking down into a beautiful creamy texture. That looks good, huh? Yeah. Okay. And you're going to have the chance to sample it. Just a little bit more. And I always tell my students, you need to taste all the time, right? This is so hard to taste right now. Chocolate. Beautiful. You can add a bit of cayenne pepper if you want to into it, right? You can definitely change this recipe and make it tasty. I think this is what I'm going to do. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a little bit of the mousse into a pastry bag and it's holding in a glass jar. So you can make this recipe and serve it right away. We'll put it in your refrigerator and um, um, serve it a little bit later. I would cover it so it won't dry out. You can use this mousse as a filling in a tart, right? Think about a chocolate mousse tart with some bananas and berries. There's so many ways that you can serve this mousse. Today we're just going to serve it as is, but I'm just thinking about a birthday party or anything that it's easy to make. It's great on ice cream. It's great on ice cream, definitely. Thank you. Now, obviously, we do everything we can to make everything work. Everybody can hear me, though, right? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. So we try to make everything look as beautiful as possible, which is why Martine put it in a pastry bag, you know, so it has that beautiful design. But you could just, you know, pop it or really get it off the spoon. <laughs> and he's saying, you so can use this mousse any way you want. So just going to start. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We know what she's talking about. She's in a new relationship. So, so isn't this a lovely platter here of chocolate desserts and you're going to get to taste that. And I need to move on because I'm going to be showing you how to make that cardamom cake. We only have about maybe 10 minutes at the most to show you how to do that. And 
and uh, but it's very, very simple. How many of you have ever made a walnut-based brownie? Raw brownie? Okay, a few of you have. It's very similar to that. We're going to be using walnuts that have been soaked and dehydrated, again, to remove the bitterness, the bitter enzyme inhibitors that interfere with digestion, by the way, and also create a bitter flavor, which is why people tend to toast their walnuts to kind of get rid of that bitterness. So we're going to be using uh, soaked and dehydrated walnuts, which, are, by the way, are a perfect um, balance of omega-3 fatty acids and omega-6 fatty acids, so it's very healthy fat, heart healthy, walnuts. And I'm going to make uh, a flour out of this right now. Doesn't take long. How there it is. How long do you dehydrate the walnuts? The walnuts need to be dehydrated, soaked for six to eight hours, and then dehydrated again six to eight hours, depending on how well your dehydrator works, so that the, the walnut is crispy. When you hear it break like that, it's crispy. That's, that's how long you want it to go. Question over here? If you don't have a dehydrator, just don't soak your walnuts. Because you can't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't roast them. Because really, roasted nuts are really create free radicals that, that attack your cells. And the talk that I'm going to be doing tomorrow will mention some of that. Like the kinds of things you don't want to do, it, unless you want to grow old fast, you know, or get cancer, or any other kinds of diseases that will be created as a result of eating fried foods and and acrylamides, which are, can are also cancer-causing chemicals caused by high heat cooking. So I, I recommend never eating roasted nuts or, or toasting them. Either soak the nuts or don't soak the nuts. But you can't use wet nuts to make desserts like this. So it's got to be a dry nut. Not quite flour enough. We're going to blend it a little more here. Okay. Now I'm going to add dates. The dates are the sweetener here once again. This is the main sweetener, and I won't be using any other kind of sweetener. And so, quite a lot of dates here. And the dates, are again, are not chilled because they just blend a whole lot better if they aren't chilled. Important thing, I'm, as I'm tearing them apart, the reason I'm tearing them apart like this is because I want to make sure that there's no pits hiding, even though I pitted them. Who knows, the phone could have rang in the middle of my process. I could have just missed a pit, and it's the pits when that happens because you got to take everything out of the food processor and find that little rascal. Okay, uh, that's not all I have to do. I have to put, yeah, put the dates in. I'll just put the dates in now. They're in. And then I'll add the rest of my ingredients here. So I got a good start. There's some dates here that just aren't making it into the blades, and they're always easy to identify. Just break them apart, like that. Okay. And then I'm adding my cacao powder. Again, this is raw cacao. You can add, you know, you can use cooked cacao powder if you want to, uh, roasted cacao powder. This is cardamom. This is the secret ingredient for the not so secret chocolate cardamom cake. And a pinch of salt, salt, a little bit of salt, really helps to balance all of those flavors together. And again, vanilla. All right. So far, so good? You with me here? Not too hard, is it? Oh, last ingredient. Okay, that cardamom smells so good with the chocolate. It's just such an amazing combination of flavors. Okay, I'm going to break this up a little bit. It's very, very thick. I'm going to break it up a little bit, and I'm going to add some water. I'm breaking it up because sometimes the dates just, you know, really are harder to mix than if I were using a, a liquid sweetener or even a dry sweetener. Okay, breaking it up a little. I'm going to blend it just a little more. 
And then you're going to see I'm going to pour water through the tube, a very small amount of water, and that is what's going to magically form this into a really nice fudgy cake. Let's just see if that's enough. You only use as much as you really need to, and it looked to me like it was forming, yeah, very nice. Very nice. So this is the, the texture of a nice fudgy brownie, and that's all I want. Now, the amount of water that you use, even though, I need some gloves, Martine, thank you. Even though the recipe calls for a specific amount of flour, I mean of uh, water, the amount of water you use really is going to be determined by how moist your dates are. Mm -hmm. If you're using really dry dates, and some, like some of the neglet dates are pretty, mo pretty dry compared to the medjool dates, which are very, very sticky. So if you're using a moist, sticky date, you're going to need a lot less water. All right. Now, because of time, because of our time um, frame here, I think you can take that away, and the chocolate that I put in the refrigerator, <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I, I want it now because even though I'm not going to actually form both two cakes and put the ganache in the middle and all that because we don't really have the time for it, I just want to bring it out. Um, so if I were making this a two-layer cake, I would divide it in half equally. Thank you. I would divide it in half equally between two small pans. Or I could just make a single-layer cake in kind of a brownie pan. That would work as well. Um, and if I were going to fill the layer with, um, you know, in between with chocolate, then I would definitely divide it into two. You don't have to do that. You could just make the single layer cake and you could even drizzle some of that mousse that Martine made, thin it down a little bit and drizz drizzle that over the top. Um, it's also good just served with ice cream, even as a crumble or as a little small tart. I didn't, I didn't uh, measure this, but I would have measured it and divided whatever the measurement was equally between these two cakes. So what I'm doing is I'm distributing it as best as I can, and then I'm, going to, then I'm starting to pat it down as Martine is doing with me. So while we're, while we're doing this, we're patting it down all the way around. This is our spring form pan. So again, it has the, the kind of the bottom that lifts up. And we'll use our spatula to make it firm all the way around. Now, I don't know if that's really, is that chocolate layer firm enough to actually mm -hmm. frost it? But we can pour it over the two and then... When they're ready, yeah, it's still too, too thin. We can pour it over the top and then uh, refrigerate it and not put them together, but just so you can see how that's done. So, nice and, nice and firm. And then we pour our ganache layer. It's usually a little firmer than this by now. Let it refrigerate for at least half an hour. And it will get hard, just like those truffles did. And then we would put, once it's firm, then we would put the top layer over the bottom layer. Does that make sense? Okay. So that said, let's go ahead and hand out our samples because the samples of the cake have uh, the bottom layer with the ganache in the middle and the top layer on top of that. Now another thing that you can do if you just made a single layer is you could take a little bit of cacao powder and you could just powder the top just like that using, using a little uh, mesh screen here so that you don't have any big lumps just like that. So we're going to refrigerate this and we'll add it to our dessert selection 
later on. So any questions? Any questions about the desserts that we just made? Or questions about the school? Now remember that you can come to our booth. You can talk to us about courses. If you're interested in having a Living Light Center in your area, certainly come and talk to my husband Dan and I at the booth. If you're interested in one of these desserts later on this afternoon, you probably are not going to be ready right away because we're serving you a lot of chocolate. Um, then we have those, all those delicious desserts available to you. Any questions? We also are selling some of our books. We have um, Angel Foods, uh, Raw Food for Dummies, and Raw Food Revolution Diet with us today. Those are three of our books. Uh, what type of vanilla are we using, Martine? What, what's the brand of vanilla that we're using? Frontier. Frontier. Frontier is a spice company. They have wonderful spices and extracts. Other questions? What do you think about the dessert so far? Right? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And Martine Lucier.